Now, all the reversing entries are going to be as of 3.03.31.23, the first day of the next following period. And now note that you might say, hey, I'm just going to, I'm going to reverse it and put the debit on top and the credit on the bottom. But usually when I'm doing a reversing entry, I like to have the accounts the same from top to bottom. There's only two accounts right here, so it should be easy to see either way. But just as a general rule, I'm going to say I'm, this is a reversing entry. I'm just going to mirror the order of the accounts, accounts receivable on top, but make it a credit of 450. That to me is easier to compare to the adjusting entry, easier to build, easier to enter. Some people get upset if you don't have the debits on top, but I, I just think that's an easier way to go. So that's, that's what I typically would do. And when you have longer complex entries like we had with the invoice, then it's a lot easier to do, I think. So this is gonna be a reversing entry. The name, I have to put something here. I'm not gonna put the name of the actual customers involved, but ZZZ, so it'll be out of the way, not mess up the accounting department on the day to day. And then here I'm going to put unearned revenue, unearned revenue, liability account. And there it is. No need for a name on that one. And so let's do it. This is going to, as of the first day after the cutoff date, reverse it. So it's going to decrease accounts receivable, putting it to that ZZZ customer in the sub ledger and unearned revenue back down to zero. So we're back to where the bookkeeper was before. So we don't mess them up, save it and close it.